How's it going? And welcome. We are going to get into some hatching. And, um, you know, it's about to be Inktober. It is Inktober. So we are going to have to figure it out. Um, hatching is one of the most fun ways to go about all this stuff. So, um, and it's something that people have a lot of questions about. So let's, let's get right to it. Um, so I'm here uh, working digitally, but this all works in analog. And I'm, we're going to do plenty of, of stuff analog, too. Um, you know, hatching all comes down to, uh, to value, right? Um, we have our value scale here. I'm going to put one off to the side here. I always like to do little charts like this so that we have something to, uh, we have something to go by when we're drawing. And if we don't have our little tools off to the side, it, it can be daunting. Um, when you first start inking stuff out, you'll probably see randomly spaced lines um, out there and, and you'll think, well, okay, that's, that's doing, some, doing some hatching. Really, it's not. Um, if we were to go out and um, create a tone like this, right, we would call that like a big flat mass of, of tone and value. And what we're doing with hatching is uh, we are creating a bunch of lines next to each other so that it looks together like one big tone of value, right? If those lines get far apart, it doesn't read as a tone. It reads as individual separate lines, okay? So you will be able to, with pen, create lighter and darker lines, even with the same pen, by just varying pressure. So you'll be able, and I can imitate this digitally if I turn opacity and flow down, you'll be able to make um, lines that have a lot of variety to them. And then eventually, if you push hard, you can create lines that are much darker. Okay. So within a given direction of hatching, you have some variety that you can play around with. Okay, and um, one of the traditional things about hatching is that uh, hatching should be basically perfectly straight, and the line should all be evenly spaced. Right? And you can tell that that's not a great example of traditional hatching. But the nice thing is, it doesn't matter now, because that way that you hatch is kind of like your personal signature and your personal style, right? One of the other things to watch out for in hatching that, that's traditional is that when you would make a mark, if you make a little hook on the return, this was considered bad marksmanship, bad hatching, right? So now you can actually do that if you're drawing something rounded, right? You could potentially hook around at the end of that or at the beginning of that to create rounded hatch marks and that can actually help you out. So one of the things that we want to do um, with this is we'll come back and we'll use um, we'll use actually white since we're on paper and we can go ahead and create our value scale with white and we can actually cross hatch to create a white and then we can come back down and create our absolute dark. With our absolute dark, we don't need to be as careful. We can just get in there and cross hatch and get dark with it. Because the function of an absolute dark is to create a deep, deep shadow that you can get no darker. So here, we've got our highlights, right, with our white. And here we are going to leave the paper tone, and that's going to be kind of our half tone. Then we have our tone, our core, and then we just did our drop shadow. Okay, so our half tone, we may need to get in there sometimes with like little bits of sketchy, but not that much. We want to basically just stay out of the light. For our tone, we're going to use our single direction hatching. We can go in and create a tone with one direction. For our core, very logically, we go in. We create our same tone, overlay it with another tone, and we crosshatch. 
to get a proper core, we may have to go over it twice to fully differentiate the value equally between our tone and our drop shadow. So if we zoom out, we can see our full value scale there. Okay, So there should be a, little, a pretty even jump from each position on the value scale. And that allows us to hatch. Now, if you're working on white paper, that, that changes. And you may need a little bit more in your half tone, but not completely covering it, and you just leave your white blank. That's the only difference. And I'll show you that um, when we work on actual paper. So um, one of the problems with hatching is that if you're hatching over an area, say you're working on a plane, right? what happens when you hatch this direction? Then you need to come over here and continue hatching. This creates a funky little line here, right? And generally speaking, we want to try to avoid that by um, getting uh, really loose and familiar with our paper size so that we can hatch the full length of this plane, right? So this means you're going to have to draw from the arm a little bit. You're going to have to turn the paper to make sure that it's comfortable. And you're going to have to get control. And that's totally OK, right? The uh, next thing that you want to think about, too, is the line direction. And this is where we're going to go in the next video, but I just wanted to introduce it here. If we're hatching a plane, right, being a sort of flat surface, right, first off, we close off this. We might want to bump up the line weight a little bit, try over it a couple of times. Maybe we want to get real heavy with the line weight to be sure that we hang on to this edge. And then we may want to go in and hatch. And now we have basically two directions that we can hatch with. We can go this way, right? And we can go the other way. One of the problems that you will encounter with hatching as you do this sort of thing is you'll wind up taking, setting up a plane for yourself, right? And you'll wind up doing something like this. Just kind of covering it with random hatch marks that don't have anything to do with where the plane's going, right? And you're missing out on an opportunity here. This isn't necessarily wrong, but it's a missed opportunity. Because one of the things that's nice about cross hatching and hatching is that it can reinforce the direction that a plane is going, OK? So we can think about hatching this direction, this direction, this direction, and filling in those gaps with hatching, all reinforcing the direction that the plane is going. Right? And we can build up tone as much as we want. Right? We could even push single direction hatching into the core tone by just going over it enough if we need to. It's a tool. And then to hold on the edge, we can come back, bump up the edge, bump up the bottom, and there we have it. OK? And we can come back and do that for any plane that we need to. Now, going back into cross hatching, the traditional cross hatching method was to create 60 degree hatching. So you would have a series of hatches going one way. Then you would shift 60 degrees and go the other way. And this does create an interesting pattern, right? It's, in a way, significantly more interesting than 90 degrees, right? 90 degrees is stable, flat, and boring. OK? And in another way, it is still more interesting than 45 degrees. you shifted an exact perfect 45 degrees, that's not as interesting as 60. Because this, is, this introduces a certain amount of dynamic movement into the hatching. This is static, and this is sort of somewhere in between, right? 